pie been a pour and a ching chong banana. <laughs> <laughs> Ching Chong Banana is my favorite. Welcome to another episode of Genius Brain <laughs> Podcast. I am your host, David Slow. I'm your other host, Joe Jitsukawa. And we have a very unspecial guest. Uh, he's simply here just because. Just, just because. I'm just because, here to hang. Because I'm tired and jet lagged like a motherfucker, bitch. <laughs> and we need help. <laughs> we need fucking help. So we brought fucking Nick. And your boy is going to fuck everything up. You know what was so obnoxious? Um, I, I've been, <laughs> I read this uh, comment where somebody wrote, they go, and I, I had to block this person too. Not because he's a bad person or anything, but just because of how socially <laughs> stupid they are. They you go, block a lot of people. I love blocking people. It's like one of my favorite things to do. But he writes, you know what, David? You curse way too much. I'm trying to watch this at work and I have to turn it off whenever my boss walks around. Oh, Poor guy. Hey, dude, Poor when you're guy. at work, just work. Just work. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, what do you put on some headphones, you stupid you have, ass? Are you playing this on Bluetooth speakers? Yeah. And if you if you were a fan of anything that we've done and just kidding or it's my not stuff, like you started to cuss more in you life. Know. You know, like the fuck is he talking about? You know what you're getting with David. So, hey, hey, if you're listening right now, fuck, 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 <laughs> fuck. I yeah, hope your boss hears this. Go f- fuck. But, fuck. It, but it's so weird. It's like you are this morally pious human being that's going to set me right. I've been I've been cursing like this since I was a little kid. You're not going to well, change what shit. What if it was a joke, dude? Like in in it in it in a bad <laughs> joke. You know, usually I could tell that's if it's a, a joke. joke. It definitely wasn't a joke oh. for sure. And if it was a joke, man, dude, I am so sorry. I saw that I comment hope. too. I saw that comment too. People are always, people always say you curse a lot. It's like how are you just finding this out? now what if he was making fun of somebody do you get a lot of that like you, david you curse too much do people say that about um you i mean it, it happens every now and then and i'll i'll control it when i want to but this is a podcast space and this is just how i normally speak so i'm just gonna curse up a storm like if there's little kids around i'll do my best not to if i'm at a church or a business meeting probably not today we were walking behind some kids and david was like look at these stupid fucking kids walking so slow bef- ahead of us that's what he said well that was exactly before or after i robbed them because <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> after you punch them in the back of the head all of them like you idiots after yeah. you kick the backpack off of them yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you motherfucker. I grabbed them by the backpack and I shook all their change out. Yeah. Stupid, stupid idiot. Yeah, you stupid. One time I hit a kid at, well, that seems mean. Oh, should I just even say this? Okay. We're at Disneyland <laughs> and I had a backpack and this kid kept like hitting my, like kept bumping into me. <gasps> like, and shit. he just, and, and, the, and the parents didn't really say anything. And the kid was fucking around and he kept hitting my bag a lot. You know so, what's in, Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry, it's, it's real quick. Oh, I thought you were done. I was like, damn. That was so he kept hitting, story. he kept bumping into my, my backpack. Like and what, then, like his head or? No, just like running into it, like hitting uh, it, like just kept fucking around with it. Yeah. And his head was right by my side and then I had my backpack on and I just was like, what'd you say? And I hit, I used my backpack and I pretended like someone said something and I hit him with my backpack and he, he was like oh man he literally said he goes oh man Sneaky little and i was kid. like yeah that's right dude. that's what i thought don't stand so close to a strangers you like, should have just farted too yeah hit him in the face and fucking fart that's I'd a be, one I'd two punch caught justin kids <laughs> in, 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 <laughs> in elementary school there was this kid his name i shit you not was this mexican kid named michael jordan <laughs> This little Mexican kid, Michael Jordan, a fucking Michael Jordan. I think That's his so dad was fire. a cop or whatever. But the kid, I we used to make fun of this cat because he used to always eat the same fucking lunch. It was a. I call it the the white people white white bread sandwich mm. with ham and yeah, that's it's just a, a piece of bologna and American cheese. Yeah. And those it was a wonder bread with and the white bread. He would stick uh, Cheetos inside and eat it like that. Mm. And for some fire, reason, dude. we used to always clown on him about that shit, but that shit was next level. And I think I would just make fun of him because everybody else would. Plus, he was annoying. But he used to always <laughs> do this shit where he would. He got made fun of for that. We, it's usually those kids that made fun of us for the rice balls that we yeah. just we just try to make fun of everybody That's for true. anything. So this kid used to flat tire people all the time, like step mm. on the back of the oh. shoe. He deserves that. And I remember I got in trouble because this kid kept flat tiring me, and I t- and I kept telling him stop doing that, stop doing that, and he kept mocking me, going, "Oh, stop doing that, stop doing that." And so I turned around and I socked him in the stomach so fucking hard, he just started gasping for air, <laughs> like one of those types. Of moments and then the fucking teacher grabbed me and she goes you're coming with me to the principal's office yeah dude don't punch him in the stomach but he kept flat tiring my fucking <laughs> shoe though but that's all she saw was you punch a kid in the stomach if you're a kid too it's fair game you could beat up other kids yeah yeah, yeah. But if I you're an adult, I don't know about that you gotta just fart on them or something I yeah, remember yeah, yeah, yeah. punching him so hard and it felt so fucking good and I remember watching him gasp for air and I felt satisfied as fuck but I felt so I felt like 
I was the hero in the story, but I was getting punished. And I kept telling him, he kept stepping on the back of my shoe. But they didn't care about the story. They were just like, you punched him and that's all that matters. Fucking dweeb, dude. Yeah, that, That's always what made me feel like uh, teachers and administrators were so dumb. Yeah. And I'm like, why can't you reason? Yeah. Y'all stupid. And they, they probably know Michael Jordan was a little dickhead. They're like, man, yeah, They I just know. don't want to deal it. with it. I get it. He's a little fucking Everyone's asshole. tired, man. But don't punch him in the stomach, David. That's what they probably told you. Yeah, probably, huh? They're like, hey, just don't punch him. You got to get it. You got to be I, sneaky. I ain't no fucking rata, though, dude. Yeah. I can't come up to the teacher and be like, hey, Michael Jordan stepping on the back of my shoe. No, I ain't no fucking He's rata. stepping on the back of my junk level. I know. What What's the up? fuck, eh? <laughs> What's up? He was actually pretty whitewashed. Okay. Yeah. Michael Jordan. Yeah, that's. Yeah, dude. Yeah, and I mean, he sucked Jordan at doesn't sound very Mexican to me. He fucking sucked at basketball, which was so funny. Dude, you know what's crazy is that he's an adult now and his name is still Michael Jordan. I know. <laughs> as a kid, it's like kind of cute. Like, oh, haha. I wonder what but happened to as him. As an adult, your name is Michael Jordan. You're like, oh, I wonder man. if people still make fun of him for that. Hey, you're Michael Jordan. Are you, you good at basketball? <laughs> <laughs> like Michael Bolton, like in Office Space? Like back in the day, somebody told me um, not too long ago that he. I guess he kind of thugged out or something. Or like he's... Michael Jordan thugged out? What he if would, he comes back to you and he has like fucking face tattoos? Like, hey, I'm out of prison. I heard that podcast on Genius Brain. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't go back to those parts of Sacramento anymore. And then you're like, hey, let's fight, but no low kicks. Let's you want to hear some funny shit, dude? You would you would be... Yeah, no low kicks because my legs are fucking done. Shout out to John for beating the shit out yeah, of David. Thanks, <laughs> John, for beating the living fuck out of me today. Um, yeah. But the the interesting thing is... Because I, I, I wouldn't say that I grew past Sacramento, but the areas that I used to kick it in, I don't kick it in those areas anymore. But me and my best friend, we were driving around uh, just Sacramento just to kind of relive our childhood. But like, yo, remember we used to go over here and kick it over here? We drove by. My God, it was decrepit. I was like, this is where I used to kick it? I got so scared. I started grabbing my fucking purse and shit. I was like, what the fuck? Locking your doors, rolling like, up your up, windows. Homie? I'm like, oh, you guys are, you peasants, get away from me, you yeah. ingrates. I, I live in like, Pasadena oh, now. Yeah, I live in Pasadena and I could walk freely. <laughs> it was, we were, we were driving down the street and it was next to my uh, junior high named James Rudder. Like James Rudder, that area is kind of hood. But there was these dudes playing fucking street football, and we were driving, and they looked at they looked at me dead in my fucking eye, and they just start, still started passing the ball. I couldn't say shit because I thought they would fucking murder me. Yep. Let me tell you something. If you're a grown-ass man and you're still wearing South Pole denim jeans, you just <laughs> got out of prison. Pole. He for sure just got out of fucking prison. Yeah, where do you find South Pole jeans now? I don't know. I know where he found it. It's after he got out of jail. He got the pants he got that, he wore, <laughs> when, that he wore 20 years ago. And he was still wearing them. So they just kept throwing that football back and forth, and I had to wait. Damn. And I realized that I am not the same man anymore. Yeah. I can't be in those type of areas. No. Too scary. I can't deal with that shit. What would you do now if that, that were to happen? Now? Yeah. I would wait for their game to finish for 20 minutes. <laughs> you wouldn't drive around them? No, I'd be too scared because I want them to think I'm you a pussy. You wouldn't reverse it and drive the other way? <laughs> I, want, I, want them to think, I want them to think I'm only a half pussy because I'm still gangster enough to stay there and wait for their game. Yeah. And just be like, just finish. Yeah, South Pole jeans. You feel like thug. you're playing chicken with them yeah. in the car? It's like, <laughs> any minute now, I'll run you over. Yeah it's, yeah, it's it's pretty weird, though. Like, you don't feel comfortable in the areas that you used to just kind of yeah. kick it with. Like, I, Oh, I, I don't go back to any other. Uh, oh, fuck no. It's oh, ghetto, no. dude. Yeah, I'm just, I'm like, oh, man, I can't believe this used to be more comfortable. Yeah. I used to be afraid of white people neighborhoods. You yeah, know that? I, know. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't feel comfortable here. I'd rather be around trash. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like literally trash. I'm not saying people. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, garbage. like there's no garbage on the, on the floor. Yeah, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, I'm here? like, what's going on? Why is it so clean? This is something's going on. It's Pasadena, right. South Pasadena is I probably love Pasadena, one of the man. nicest places I've ever lived in. You go north of the freeway, though. That's where Highland Highland Park. No, that's well north of like North Pasadena is oh. where you get like the the rep that people kind of. Oh, is that where uh, the 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 church's chickens at? Yep. Yep. Anywhere there's chicken. a church's Lake chicken. Lake Avenue. Pit, there's yeah, like five there. chicken shops on that street alone. You know what, Roscoe's though? fucking churches, we, Louisiana. Me and Tiff just got some food on um, around that area, and they're st it's starting to look a little different. It's starting to look a little wider, mm. a little less ethnic. I mean, that area was like soul food street. Yeah. Like there's barbecue and I used everything. To get my, I used to get a haircut over there mm. at my black barber shop. It was called King's, and... um. The guy got murdered at his barbershop. He got stabbed. Because he gave a really bad fade. I don't know. Probably. I don't know. Is it is it hood over there? Because yeah. like when I go to Louisiana Fried Chicken, like. That's actually. 
that shit is all bulletproof glass, but I'm like, what Louisiana fried chicken doesn't have <laughs> no, that's bulletproof true. window? That's but standard. Then it's like, where where is most Louisiana fried chickens? In the hood. Yeah. 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 And then also, we used to play basketball across the street at Pinaresca Park. Is it close to Altadena? Yeah, a little north is Altadena. You know, so. it's, it's weird because like, I'm from the South Bay, so like coming out here and all of a sudden there's this small little ghetto in Pasadena, and it's still not as ghetto as like the South Bay Ghettos. Yo, some of these OGs still rep Pasadena, that area, like it's still hood because uh, Vince knows a b-boy that grew up in Pasadena, mm-hmm. and he called that fool reps Pasadena like it's like it's the block. You know what though? It is still pretty hood, man. Like you gotta go like like deep in the neighborhood, like when you go around that area, yeah. it it does get a little dodgy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, he calls it the Dina. Yeah, yeah, straight up. Um, there's a lot of bloods over there. There's like mm. a big. They were on an episode of Gangland when they were covering the bloods. And they were talking oh, about what? Yeah, what the fuck? Like, and they showed the Louisiana fried chicken right on Fair Oaks, that's and Washington. My spot. But but that whole area is. Oh, um, that's the one you're talking about. I was, I was talking about the one on Lake. Oh no no no! Yeah, no. yeah. That one's not as bad. But the higher you up, I see. Well, it's you know, well, There's there's a different concentration. But I haven't you know like when I was in high school, like we knew a lot of dudes that were bloods and stuff like that. But. Since then, I haven't really talked to a lot of those guys, but I'm, I'm sure that stuff is, you know, that I'm gate. sure it's still like last year, there was a lot of like uh, shootings. There's a lot of deaths, a lot of kids that we knew that we used to like that go to gangland high school with, shit is away. fucking crazy, man. I, when I was living in K Town, I the, the street <laughs> I was watching uh, the episode where they were talking about the who, what's the uh, Hispanic gang with a bunch of numbers on their heads. Um, and they got a bunch know. of tattoos all over their face. They're like Salvadorian or some shit. Oh, MS thirteen. MS thirteen. Trucha. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always fuck that up too. So I I only heard about MS thirteen when I came to LA, right? So I don't know if there's MS thirteen in Northern California or not. There probably is, but probably I don't know, yeah. it's not as prevalent or something. I don't want to know about them. Yeah, so it's weird because your your glass gets shattered. Because when I was there, I didn't notice any MS thirteen people at all. But when I saw that fucking thing. Everywhere. The yep. ta- I noticed all the tagging oh, all over the place. Yeah, you're looking for it. Yeah. And so right where I was living, there was a club that was right across from us. And it was like an, a club where it was just filled with just MS-13 people. I had no fucking idea. Oh, That's like scary. that K-Town area you lived in? Yeah. yeah. I had no fucking idea. And there was a fucking hot dog cart I used to always get LA street dogs from. And that was like an area where the MS-13 people were just hanging around there. And I and I remember I was getting a hot dog, and I looked around, I'll go, oh, what the fuck? I had no clue until I saw that dog. Mm. It was so fucking crazy. So you just thought it was like Mexicans just chilling. Just, just chilling. See, and once then you, you know. watch the documentary, and you're like, I noticed that tagging. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> I know this is bliss, dude. Everyone straight knows up. how to read hiero- hieroglyphics now. You're like, oh, what the fuck? I was like, what the fuck am I? And then you saw the dudes with the tats on their head and all over the place. I mean, they seem pretty nice, but I would walk over there with flip flops, t shirt, and some basketball yeah. shorts, just getting hot dogs. I, I feel like since um, my life has changed and I live in a different neighborhood, I think the whole world is just getting better. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, everybody's like, good. I just like, man, you know what? The the world is becoming a richer place. <laughs> yeah, it's just me changing, man. <laughs> Fuck. You go back to the old hood. It's like, oh, it's still kind of fucked up. I feel like I feel, I feel like I'm better than them. <laughs> I'm like I'm better than you. You don't speak to me in great. <laughs> you you fucking you fucking ghetto people you leave me alone it's like people i grew up with my whole life you'd be a hit at your hometown if you started saying that they'd love you over there oh yeah they just fucking love me now i don't hang out in those bad places anymore now i hang out in the downtown midtown sacramento area <laughs> that is the type of guy i am i drink coffee i drink espresso and i wear plaid damn you turned into a hipster man Hell, david yeah. bought a nine dollar espresso in new york you gentrified yourself <laughs> yeah <laughs> Nine dollar espresso, damn! Dude, man. who the fuck do you think you are? Dude, you'd I, fucking grow a beard if you could too. I would. You got nineteen dollar bowl of ramen. That dude, was I would mediocre. grow a beard and I would adopt a fucking African baby right now, looking like a lumberjack, <laughs> a Korean lumberjack. They're looking they're, like where's Waldo? <laughs> fuck the lumberjack. You would just work at a coffee shop just for fun. I will open up my laptop and pretend to write a script right now. <laughs> okay, guys, I can't work anywhere but Starbucks for some reason. Either that or write music or some yep. shit. Dude, when I was in the when I was in the plane um, traveling at, for the for the last Zenfus to New York, fucking shit, dude. There was a guy behind me talking about his LA experience, and I wanted to blow my fucking brains out because he was talking to the lady, impressing her about all the stuff that he's doing. And he goes, "Yeah, you know, from well, where? From I don't know where the fuck. He, oh, he's from New York, uh, and he was he was talking about how." Um, 
there's different industries in New York. He goes, yeah, like I was making it pretty big out in New York, but I decided I wanted to challenge myself and come out to LA. You should have turned around and said, no, <laughs> we, no, stay, no, get back. No, I'll buy you a ticket back to New York. Don't fucking go to LA. So he was- Stay there, stay. Yeah, and he just kept talking about, he goes, yeah, you know, I'm an editor for, you know, maybe you've heard of her, like Ellen DeGeneres. Maybe Shut you've the heard fuck of her. up, he said that. He said, maybe you've heard of her, Ellen DeGeneres, That's Steve so Harvey. Stupid. I wanted to fucking choke was this guy Was he very soft-spoken? Like, I'm just working on a bunch of projects right now, and I'm just kind of working on me. Yes. And, uh, I just oh my really God, to focus. the fucking T, dude. I just want to focus on like other projects. Uh, right now, I'm not doing any passion projects right now i've been working with ellen generous <laughs> yo that's to the fucking t and then he was talking about how oh you know a lot of people don't make it out here in la but you know i wanted to prove myself shut the fuck to be somebody different so i'm i'm, I'm actually thriving out here that's and a humble brag right there a humble brag to the fucking max that's like lady, everyone in fucking hollywood dude i turned around and guess what this fucking guy looked like fucking nose ring plaid shirt and then pink dreads white guy with pink dreads yo and oh the lady God. just like oh cool i'm just gonna read this magazine <laughs> was he trying to like Fuck. spit game uh, he wasn't trying to spit game he was just talking himself up super fucking loud i'm talking about a plane like, is usually those guys are the most laziest motherfuckers on oh yeah earth. that guy sucks and you look at the lady she's asleep she's not even listening <laughs> the lady wasn't even asking him he was like volunteering this information on his own like nobody's asking you i want everyone to come to la just to experience these frauds yeah Dude. And they're they're never they're not a local like no one no one acts like that. Yeah, here. they're all from other yeah. states. Or oh, whatever. and then people get a bad idea of what LA is. Yeah, because it's all these transplants that come here and they want the LA life, and then they meet other transplants thinking that they're LA people, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, these are, LA people are so fake." It's like, no, bitch, you guys met each other, and <laughs> you guys are fake to each other, and then you go back thinking that's what LA was all about. They just want to feel like they made it. Genius Brain is brought to you by Skillshare. Well, everybody, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. You can take classes in everything from photography and creative writing to design, productivity, and more. So whether you're returning to a longtime passion project, challenging yourself to get outside your comfort zone, or simply exploring something new, Skillshare has classes for you. And what's pretty awesome is I've been clicking around on the website and I saw one of my favorite authors, Simon Sinek. He wrote Start With Why. Uh, he has some videos on there. So what's awesome about Skillshare is they have a lot of like professionals and people that are experts in their field that are teaching classes. And I think it's pretty awesome to continuously learn even after school or even on the side because when you brush up on your skills and you keep developing and growing you become mother awesomes <laughs> so join the millions of students already learning on skillshare today with a special offer just for our listeners get two months of skillshare for free two months my friends that's right skillshare is offering genius brain listeners two months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free wow to sign up go to skillshare.com slash brain Again, go to Skillshare.com slash brain to start your two months now. That's Skillshare.com slash brain. There was this tweet that uh, Tim retweeted. I think this kid was a YouTuber. And he was talking about, oh, all these people in LA are fake. They're just here for connections. And, you know, none of them are really true homies. And I'm like, well, what? What the? F Did you come to L.A. For, for to make fucking best friends? You dumb bitch! <laughs> yeah, you dude. literally came to L.A. for to connections to do the yeah. same shit. So yeah. who the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about, yeah. man? Like if you came as a YouTuber to L.A. to make friends, you have lost your mind. You didn't. You came here to work with people to 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 gain clout through other people's connections. Yeah. So what did you expect? Everyone's using everyone. Yeah. So In what some did you expect? Way or, yeah. Like it, it was so odd. I, I I think it's very odd when people don't set their expectations right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you came here and you found out that, that a couple people were snakes, well, that's to be expected because you're a fucking snake yourself. <laughs> yeah. So what did you expect? And you didn't think you'd bump into one? Yeah. It's you like, know? like they, fuck. They, they Anyone that's chasing fame, there's something wrong with them. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And they kind of sound like the dude that uh that had a fuck buddy and all of a sudden they caught feelings and they're mad oh, for getting their feelings hurt. That's what it sounds like. It, like. Yeah. She's a slut anyway. She wasn't yeah. even that hot. <laughs> they say shit like that. Because I, I feel like generally <laughs> the people that I've met here are people who that are close friends are people from LA. Yeah. They they actually grew up exactly and like they have a foundation. All of our like my crew, like yeah. JK, like everybody you met. LA natives. Ma majority of us are LA natives, and it's a totally different personality from 
transplant entertainers yeah. or anybody that comes here and they want the quote unquote mm. LA life. Like they want to pretend that they work in the industry. They want to, you know, be a model or whatever. And there, there is a good majority of them in these small little areas. Like, I don't know, I'd say like Hollywood, mm -hmm. West Hollywood or, or like Santa Monica or like, you, and know. You, you know, and I, and I say this too, because I think I made this mistake as well. I think be, just because the people that I grew up, I, I keep friends for a very, very long time. Like my, whenever I get married, my wedding's going to be filled with people that I've known since I was like two years old. Mm -hmm. um, so like loyalty is a huge thing for me. I think loyalty is something that I, I really do appreciate and loyalty and honesty. Uh, it's just like a code that you kind of just grew up with no matter what, if you were a dweeb or a, th or a thug or whatever, it's just everybody grew up with that same code. So when, um, when I came to LA, I got super super disappointed in this one guy and I kind of learned to to separate friends from acquaintances and I wasn't really doing that mm. well when I came here just because I was fresh and I was new yeah but there was this cat who I, I used to work with and you know mind you like we're cool now on the sense of uh like I'm not gonna sit, you know curse him out if I see him or anything like that but uh I mean long story short he's somebody that jumps crew to crew depending on what they what he can gain so he's them. an opportunist uh, yeah. opportunist to the fucking max right yeah. but that that's the difference between him and most other people that i know he's somebody that's very likable but he's not a very good person mm. and that's the that's the quality i couldn't uh differentiate oh, from when i was yeah, younger yeah, yeah. when i first came here i was like oh he's not a good person he's yeah. just a likable guy he knows what yeah. to say and so essentially he was supposed to uh, we worked on a couple of tracks. I I, I was going to pay him and he he owned a percentage of the song when I put it up. And that was the original deal. Mm -hmm. And he kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And lo and behold, he got connected with a bigger celebrity. So he was working on their stuff. And mind you, to mix my track, it was one vocal one vocal chain and one uh, one guitar chain. That's super quick for him. He's yeah. super good at mixing. And then like a month later, he still didn't get it done talking about he's too busy. And I know oh, how- he big timed you. He big timed me. Oh. And so I got so fucking mad with him. Mind you, we had been friends at this point for like two years. And so I literally texted him. I go, hey, bro, um, you've been dodging me now for a couple of months. So I'm just going to put it to you out like this. This is not like on some work business shit. This is like on some homie shit. If you don't fucking respond to my text and come to my house in an hour, I'm going to go to your fucking place and I'm going to fuck you up. Because I was Jesus, so David, angry. So... But he, took, he already took my money <laughs> yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, he already yeah, took yeah. my money. Yeah. Hey, as a homie, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> as a homie. I guarantee you he showed up, huh? He showed up. And then oh. he sat there and he was just like, Hey man, like I just want to say, like, um, like I, I really have been busy. I was like, see, now I'm just, I'm getting fucking angrier now because I know it only takes you probably at most because I know how good you are. Thirty minutes to mix this shit. It's one track, especially when someone keeps asking you to do it. It's just like, dude, just fucking do it. And right. it was, it was a business transaction too. And yeah. I was like, you're not doing this for free. You're getting paid for it, and you own the song. So. That's why annoying. did you do it? And then he finally goes, he goes, I apologize. I'm so sorry. I was like, that's all you had to say. Now get the fuck out of my house. And I didn't talk to him for a while. Damn. But then uh, not too long ago, I, uh, I saw him at some kind of event and he apologized and we kind of squashed it there. But also a lot of people don't confront people here either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, every, no one does that. Yeah. It's They're just like, like, well, fuck that guy. He's a dick. And then leave it. Like, yeah. Cause he took my money. So that, yeah. you know, and at that time too, I was broke. So yeah. that money meant a lot to me. Can you make some of my tracks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody can mix your tracks, right? <laughs> hey, dude, they're really Put me good. on auto tune, man. <laughs> yeah. It was dude. so weird. Like, I, I, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't do that now. And e even for him too. Like, I, I mean, I, obviously, I'm not a bully. But you take my He's, fucking money. I'm broke as shit. That money means a lot. You're kind of a bully. How? <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. I'm not. Yeah. But he was in the wrong. He apologized, and yeah, you, you yeah. kind of muscle him. <laughs> <laughs> Come to my house, I'm gonna fuck you up, dude. Because like, he it went from like, hey, as a homie, I gotta talk to you. I'm gonna fuck your ass up. <laughs> oh, was get like here five to minutes. Do. Well, he, I was desperate. Yeah, you were desperate. I was desperate. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I needed that fucking money too. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah, yeah. that track would have made me money too. Mm -hmm. And you know, mind you, at this time when we started YouTube, we weren't making anything. Like yeah. I wasn't making much at all. I was making like 500 bucks a month. So that money meant a lot. And mind you, when he first moved to this place, I let him sleep at my place like for like weeks at a time. Yeah. So, there are people like that. And I think, he sounds like a, I think a lot of people guy. get burned. I, I also think too, like not just LA, but um, if you're from like a small town or small city versus big city. Yeah. Because people say the same shit about like New York or anywhere else, mm -hmm. right? They're like, man, I went there. I got burned. It, you do get a little more street smart and you do get a little bit better at managing a lot of people yeah. when you're in a big city. That's what I noticed. And that's what I learned too is... That was probably my fault because I 
did it. I, I gave him too much trust for somebody that I really didn't know, right? Yeah. And so, and also too, now, even when I work with people, I always give people deadlines now. It goes, okay, well, when can you get it done by? Like, I need it done by this day at this time. Mm -hmm. Because now it's not just on their yeah. on their time. It's like, yeah. okay, cool. Well, we both heard it and we both agreed that this is the time that we're going to have to get it done by. Well, he was just trying to teach you a lesson, dude. And you have that lesson and you took it with you. He's still the same little fuck career. too. However... You're such a good Christian guy. That's he why is, you trusted everybody. Hey, Jesus has turned over tables and socked people in the face before. I think so. Ephesians seven seventy six. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I did. Re I did read that verse. I think I Jesus verse. like flipped some tables up in some fucking sinful gambling. Thou shalt ears. pay it's, thy back. I know. <laughs> Thou shalt mix my tracks. <laughs> you stupid son of a bitch. But he's still. I think he's you should still have him on next shit. week or something. I would. And then we could talk about it on Ooh, the podcast. You should. And then I'll be good. slap him in the fucking face. <laughs> Dude, you live? Should. Do you know how many views I would get? Live. It's like, hey, man, remember that time I was going to fuck you up in my apartment? And he's like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, are you going to do it again? <laughs> Yeah. But so funny. And it's interesting Dude, too because David, so. well, he's he's like not a small guy either. So I feel comfortable saying that to him. Like, mind you, if he was Jason Chen size, I would never say that. Because now you now you, you feel just like feel like a bully. bully. Yeah. Dude, you're but a he's dick, like bro. he's like, you know, like 190 <laughs> pounds, maybe 180 pounds, like 5'10. I yeah. could slap him up and feel okay. Yeah. Or he could fight back and maybe I'll get my ass beat. But either way, I had to say it. I was so fucking mad. Yeah. And I was yeah. poor. What would you say to Jason Chen right now? Would you huh? say, would you tell? No, Jason's would you too punch sweet. Jason? First of all, I <laughs> if know he for fucked you like that though, what would you say? Yeah. I, well, this is the thing about Jason Chen. If he ever fucked me over, he's so fucking stupid. He would probably have done it in the most honest, sweetest way possible. <laughs> Jason Chen would probably fuck me over. He didn't even he know is, how sweet. He, he's he is a, a sweet really nice guy. Fucker. Yeah. Jason, dude, you want to hear some fucking funny shit? So we used to have this company called Go For Broke, right? And this is what I mean by I love Jason Chen. And no matter what anybody says about Jason, I will protect Jason like he's a national treasure because he's so honest. So Jason, when we had to go for broke, we had this like airplane, like clouds tea that had to go for broke. A couple of weeks later, I saw Jason Chen with his Music Never Sleeps tee that was the same design with the clouds. <laughs> That's yeah. our go for broke yeah. tee. It was just reverse mirror flipped. Yeah. And this guy is such a good piece of shit <laughs> he goes yo i really like that design and i used it for my shirt <laughs> like he wasn't even trying to steal it yeah, it was yeah. just more like you know what i think gets in the way is he's the chinese run so deep in his <laughs> dna <laughs> he can't resist copying <laughs> shit <laughs> he wasn't he's like i had to do it david i'm sorry <laughs> it's not even it's not even him being deceptive he just thought it was cool dude and in my mind i'm like i guess it's cool man like go ahead bro we're, we're friends but that's stupid afterwards you're like thanks man that's so cool you're like copy my shit yeah it's like dude, i guess technically, it's flattery dude he, he loves your shit yeah and i told him to go home so i could call him to tell him to come to my house so i could threaten him <laughs> <laughs> If Jason. you don't get over here in five minutes, I'm gonna fuck you up. He's hey, like, dude, hey, I was Jason, just can over you there. Get out of my apartment to go to your house so I can give you a call. Hey man, come to my house right now so I can fuck you up. As a homie though, as, as a, a homie. As a homie though, I'm gonna fuck you up, dude. <laughs> and he's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, but I'll be right over. Jason's like the nicest fucking dude ever. I mean, he's, he's a real like, sweetheart. He's socially fucking weird, but that dude <laughs> is a nice, nice guy. He is. He doesn't he, like hummus or tabule, and I ate it when he left for lunch today. <laughs> but he didn't eat any of it. So when he left. I ate, ate his you ate it on his plate and his hummus. <laughs> that fool, which is a, fine. I gotta get that fool on this podcast just so I could clown his ass. Yeah, we <laughs> you, guys should, you guys should sing together. He says some funny shit, man. He, dude, he told this story today where <laughs> when we were um, when I was playing basketball. Now, when I say I used to have a temper, I used to have a really, really. I wouldn't say it's like terrible, but if it flared up, it flared up, right? But we were playing basketball. It was me, Jason Chen, and Joseph Vincent. Joseph Vincent is also one of those like Yoshi's Sadarso as handsome motherfuckers. Yeah, get rid of all of them. <laughs> get rid of Yoshi's too handsome. <laughs> we were we were at a 24 hour fitness and we were playing ball. And it was on a fast break. I had the ball. This dude comes up and on the fast break, I grab <clears throat> they they pass it to me. I grab the ball, and as I'm about to turn around, this guy steps on my foot, shoulder checks me. Sends me fucking flying, dude. And I got so mad. I, I turned around and I started socking the wall behind us because I just went red and I was so pissed. And I fucking chucked the ball and I, I was stopping over to the guy. And Jason said, <laughs> Jason cracked up because I didn't realize this at the time, but I was so angry. But as I'm about to sock this dude in his face, he goes, I'm so sorry, man. And my sock turned into a hug. <laughs> I was like, it's all good, bro. And I tapped him on the back. It's all good, man. And I just cooled down super fast. And Jason was cracking up laughing. So your <laughs> kryptonite is apology. Apologies. But like genuine apology. Because think about it. If if in that moment after he shoulder checks me, 
I come up and I sock him in his face after he apologizes. How how big of an asshole am I? I'm the biggest asshole. I've on been earth. attacked because I've apologized. Really? Because they sense <laughs> weakness. Oh, really? Oh yeah. shit! What that the guy's fuck? a dick. That, Who and is he? That, Let's jump him. No, I was in high school, but I was like, what was his name? Were I you forgot. Joe Mama back then? No, no, no. It was that was junior high. Um, but I I forgot what it was. But then I started to smell that people will fight they would they would actually attack you harder because now they know they can fuck you up oh it gives them confidence that's a that's a bad person yeah that's a bad person it was so prevalent like back in the day oh that guy was he he said sorry in the most nicest way possible he goes dude i'm so sorry i went oh man it's all good brother (laughs) oh man (laughs) i started seeing christian hymns right after light of the world you stepped down but he he, (laughs) But I remember Jason was cracking up after that. And then fucking Joseph Vince, I think he avoided me for like a month because he got freaked out. Yeah. Because I don't think he's used to like violence. Well, dude, if I just saw a random person just start punching a wall and all the stories that you tell me where you get really upset, the common theme is, is that you get so crazy and you start punching walls. Because when I was in, okay, so let me explain that shit for a second. Which is fine. You don't punch walls? Cool. I, I, pu- I punch pillows. So oh. I'm just like, <laughs> when, I w- when I was a kid, and you this is like. those fucking yeah, money yeah, makers. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is like elementary school shit, right? So I had to go through um, like school therapy because I had uh, anger problems. Mm-hmm. Like, just growing up as a kid, my house was pretty violent. So I was very violent and I didn't know how to control my anger. And I got removed from my elementary school from fighting too much. I almost got removed from the second elementary school that I went to. And it was because I would always start throwing fists. And the main reason why is because I used to get bullied. But mm. my dad would tell me, Hey, if you're going to get bullied or if somebody's going to try to bully you, you better make sure that you're the most difficult person to bully. So yeah. I would just start fighting back. And if I'm the guy that's not going to take your shit, you're going to find somebody else to bully instead of me. And that's what would happen. So, but because of that, violence became an answer for everything. So when I hit junior high, I tried to calm down a bit, but I had this fucking pent up anger. So the only thing I could do instead of hitting somebody was punch other things. Yeah. So it ended up being a bad habit. Mm. So every time I got angry, instead of just start swinging at people, I would just sock things. And I remember <laughs> the first time that I got caught in school punching shit, it was like this water fountain. I was drinking water and I got so fucking angry because I got sent outside. I just went to go drink some water. I just started pounding my fist into the fucking fountain. And then my <laughs> hand just swelled the fuck up. And I had to go home because I couldn't use my hand. Oh, Jesus Christ, David. So, yeah. And so you, you can see this hand. This hand's all fucked up, too, because I always use my right hand and not switch it to the left like an idiot. But yeah, this yeah. hand's all, I can't, I can't um, do this. So if I that. get one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, these two go up together. <laughs> that right hand is battle tested, though. It's battle hardened. This shit hurts. Well, it, I can't. I can't bring these up separately. They have to come up together. So I don't know what happened, but I know I had a fracture. I fractured this in college from a bar room. That's a bar room fracture. Well, and so this is the the the, the weird college story was that um, when I was in college, this is when I was trying to you know just really better myself as a human being. But <laughs> Lame. I punched the wall instead. <laughs> Lame. So um, there was this girl named Nellie. She was in my dorm, and in in college, there's this. You know when you take a math class and then you have the thing afterwards. I forgot what it's called. It's it's like oh, workshop it's a, it's, or something. Yeah, workshop, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have to lecture in the workshop. So it's an advisory uh, or something. There was this kid who, I think he was like a bully in high school or some <laughs> shit. But the way he was kind of carrying himself, he was carrying himself like an asshole. Like he was too cool for school. Yeah. So Nelly, this is before the uh, the TA came in and he was going to go over the material, but Nelly. Uh, he was hitting on Nelly. Nelly was fucking fine as fuck from what I remember. She was fucking cute. Uh, she was like this Middle Eastern girl. And this dude was hitting on her and she wasn't really having it. And he was, she was like telling him to leave her alone. Like, I'm not really interested. And then he just started like harassing her. And like, mind you, I'm like this dweeby kid, glasses and whatever. But I'm a big guy. And I'm like, hey, man, just leave her alone, right? And then this guy, I don't know if he got embarrassed or he felt a little weird about it. But as I was sitting down on my at my desk, this full, he was sitting in front of me. He turns his desk around faces me and he goes, well, now you're going to be my best friend. I remember that line. He goes, you're going to be my best friend. Such a fucking lame and I, shit. You know, like when people say that shit, you kind of don't know what to say. I it never, sounds like he went to like Saved by the Bell. Or some like, shit, right? What kind of he, high school is that? Yeah, he's so, Karate Kid. He's so the, number one, he's Karate, karate Kid bully. Karate kid. Yeah. <laughs> so number one, I never grew up with this type of shit, right? So, you know, growing up. What was he? Was uh, he white? No. He's a white guy. Of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. White, that that's kind of white, white shit. That kind of bullying is like, I will slap you across the face, man. What the fuck? Yeah. And so immediately I just pop. 
Saved by yeah. the bell. High <laughs> so, saved by, so he's like this white boy and he comes up and he goes, now we're going to be best friends. And I'm like kind of sh- like confused. What I'm does like, that mean? What the fuck does that mean? And I'm sitting there kind of confused. That's the guy from the breakfast club. And then I just look at the dude and I go, <laughs> I need you to move away from me. Right. And he goes like, no, man, we're best friends now. And he's like sitting there just leaning over on the desk, like smiling at me. Pompous. And the smiling makes me angrier and angrier. So I just get up and there's like a wall next to me. I just start slamming my fucking fist into it. And it's it was a wall. I remember it was plaster. There was plastic and then plaster. And then there was like a beam <laughs> behind it. And I didn't I didn't know there was a beam there. So I just cracked the wall until I hit the beam. And when I ripped it out, there was blood just gushing out from my fucking hand. And I sat down. And I just kept staring at him. And the guy got his shit and he left the class. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, my God. And then so this this was actually during Halloween weekend. And so I was bleeding all over the place. They and thought it was like prosthetics and shit. Or some shit. No. It was, yeah. So this is what happened. I was bleeding. And when I was walking out the class, I guess I left like this trail of blood. Uh, and I the, the, the TA was asking who the fuck, you know, put the hole in the wall and all this other shit. But nobody said anything. They didn't rat me out. Thank fucking God. But when I went back to the to the uh, to my dorm, the TA looked at my hand and started laughing because he thought it was a Halloween prank. Oh, my God. But that's I think that's where I, when I fractured uh, uh, these two things here because uh, I, I didn't all hit to prove the, that point. I know, but that's I didn't a, that's punch a, him. That's a dope way to do it, though. Honestly, really? That's out of a movie, I should have punched him in his fucking nah, nah, face because nah, 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 that dude. He's he's never gonna look at you the same way. He never ever came again. back to that class. He he dropped out of that class. So, yeah. yeah, you you traumatized him. He was such a fucking asshole, dude. Like, what kind of what kind of dude? Just that's true. Because if you hit him, he would have probably sued. Oh, yeah. for sure. He's probably he one of those fuckers. Sure, would have sued you. I should have socked. You're such a good Christian, dude. I know, dude. I didn't punch that guy. Yeah, I was wrong about you, David. So thank you, man. <laughs> I try to be the best human being that I can be. And, you know, when I look back at that type of, I, I don't have that type of anger anymore where I just flip out and start punching shit anymore. But just. It, there's it, not a little bit of that living inside little, of you. It depends little. if Mariel does it to me. <laughs> See, a lot of mine came back when I started fighting in relationships. <laughs> well, because they're the I only ones that gone. could take us there. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was not there anymore. And I, I thought I was fine until we start arguing. It's then the walls start getting. Oh, you just designing. Got your- <laughs> this, you get potholes in the wall. I know it's like oh, post-apocalyptic look. You know, <laughs> I'm going for that fucking book of Eli look. Did I, Dude, you just gotta get a pillow and just be like, oh, just scream right into it every time you fucking get super pissed. I've been managing my anger much better now. That's good. Yeah. How, how do you do it? Uh, I feel it out instead of thinking it out. We so do. if I feel it and I notice that it's there. I move it down and then I let it melt in and it's just a feeling Mm. because I kept trying to think it out and then um, I got better and better at it by So you accept accept the anger? Yeah, well like just just recognizing that the feeling needs to go like I think sparring and fighting and, and all those things just help me because I can't think clear and I get more frustrated when I'm doing that. Exercise. Or like that's what, that's what well, it is. it's not. It's it's like it's like if you can overcome um, over like dealing with irritation and fear during sp- sparring or something like that, right? And then it's like because you have to do that in order to think clear. Yeah, you got to use that for the same situation. So if I am in that moment and I'm ruminating over thoughts and I'm like, okay, stop thinking because all the th- words that are coming out of your head is going to be bad. Yeah, and it's going to drive you to that point. And you just got to like melt into what you do and try to drive that energy downwards and then calm it. Damn, dude. Yeah. That's a it's good hard. way to do it. It's fucking hard. I didn't know that, that that was, you can do that, but I do that for when I'm fighting. Cause sometimes you just got to like yeah. take the hits. You got to embrace you, it. And, you, and when you feel yourself panic, I'm sure like you're very, you know what, what this is all about. But like, yeah. I just started recognizing like, oh shit, I'm actually panicking when I didn't know that I was panicking. And it might not show it, but then it's like not helping me in my game. And I have to just kind of like figure out how to be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's just hard. I, I feel like my anger now comes from more frustration than it comes from like some kind of external, uh, s- external Yeah, factor. it's internal. Like yeah. it's like you can't figure something out. So then yeah. you get mad or something. Yeah, like I that, get right? frustrated yeah, yeah. and that yeah. turns into anger. Yeah. And I think I get upset at myself because it's super childish. It's very it's petty. Child- it's very, yeah. very fucking petty, dude. It's being like road rage. Yeah. I, have, I have road rage and I need to fucking shut that shit down. Cause That's I get, dangerous. You're gonna you're gonna hurt people on a row, man. I know. I I really I just get really frustrated with certain people, 
that are just careless. Like if somebody, like I've been in the car before and if somebody almost hits us, like it's really fucking close. I see like red. I get really upset. Do you look at the driver and you go, oh, they're just old. It's okay. No, you know what? Sometimes, but it's just like, I just need them to acknowledge like kind of what you talked about. So I just need them to just be like, yo, I fucked up because in my head, I'm like a couple inches away. You, I, I could have died. Especially because he drove a Miata. He yeah. would have died. I drove a small, like, fucking <laughs> tiny car. <laughs> Fuck that car, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's it's done with. I, I I don't know. I feel like the road is just, like, a danger zone. Yeah. So if shit happens, I'm like, all right, whatever. That's just a stroke of luck, well, right? Well, yeah. But what gives me road rage is people that try to be tough in their car. I. That's another yeah. thing. That's another thing. I was about to go meet this guy in Hawaii, and we we're going to the airport, and I was in the car with my girl, and then this guy just honking behind me, right? Mm, and then he yeah. drives up, and he rolls down his window, and I'm thinking, oh, shit, he needs help or something. So yeah. I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, why don't you learn how to drive, oh, is what shit. he tells me. Yeah. And then I look at him, and <laughs> I shit you not, the first thing is, pull the fuck over. We're going to fucking fight, motherfucker. And he just looks at me yeah. like this. See? And then he drive and he just slow like I'm trying to be like face like drive next to him like that. Yeah. I'm yelling and then like the the light turns green, right? I'm just like trying to match my speed with him. Mm-hmm. So so he doesn't try to stop and I'm like go, go. We're pulling over. Just fucking pull over. Like I'm oh, not going to have a conversation with you. Yeah. And then um <laughs> this fool just completely stops while the road is all going. Yeah. And then he goes behind me and he fucking makes a right. See, that's the thing. It's like if there wasn't this barrier, yeah. you would never talk to another human being like that. Yeah, I mean, to a certain point, I right? I feel like yeah. why would you even confront someone if you're not going to do something speak about to it. them aggressively and yeah. insult them if you're not ready to die? Yeah, if you don't have that same energy, right? Like, yeah, because I don't know when it, I always think like if I'm ready to confront someone and give them that kind of energy, I'm ready to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like because you don't know if that person is armed you don't know if they're crazy you don't know if they have a knife you don't know even in a fist fight things and accidents can happen yeah where like they could get a lucky sucker punch but your head goes down mm-hmm. and i know someone that died this way yeah. she was at a party and then um she got into a fight and in her hit her head hit the curb she had a, a brain what do you call it aneurysm like a concussion aneurysm yeah. and then she died yeah and so like it's, it's very like, common actually it's stuff like, like that shit happens all the time and he was an, an older middle-aged white guy that's in a the fucking other thing. <laughs> so so to me i'm like okay i gotta remember they all they they work in a different world you know they could yell and be aggressive and to each happens. other yeah but they don't they don't get into violence because yeah. that's against the law they follow the law or try to right it's so, like the video on twitter fuck you the middle yeah, finger yeah. battle <laughs> that's <laughs> exactly what they do and they hold it down yeah. so hard they hold their fingers yeah. down like this <laughs> But to me, I'm, I just don't like that energy. Like, it's like, why do yeah. you give that out there? But I mean, like, I don't know. It, it's yeah. weird because prior to getting angry, you, you, I feel like I am the most, I feel like I'm very timid. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm scared of everything. I am too. And then but when too. you get angry, all that shit goes away. And it's like, you know what? I might, I'm most likely I'm going to get fucked up, but like I don't care. It's like, a, it's like a super energy Hulk thing where yeah. it's like, you don't even you don't even know. It just snaps I feel, inside of you. I feel like when people hear these stories, they, they, they kind of think, oh, you think you could beat everybody up? Absolutely not. No. It's just in that moment, I don't care if I get my ass beat or not. Yeah, 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 I just yeah. have to do something about it. Like very well in that college situation, maybe that guy could have knocked my ass out. Yeah. But I was so angry, I didn't care. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just like, okay. And, and it just goes back to the childhood thing where I used to get bullied a lot. And I just don't it's want to It's always to prove a point. It's like, it's more like, um, what do you call it? It's more like a domination thing. Yeah. Where like, Maybe in that moment when that guy said that and, and talked down to me, like I feel like belittled. Yeah. yeah. So I need to dominate him. You need to up the ante a little yeah. bit. Because that's what that's what they say about bullies, right? If you get bullied and you try to fucking say, you know what, I'm gonna fuck you up too, and you guys throw down, and yeah. he may beat your ass, yeah. but afterwards he's not gonna do that shit again. Right, because he wants the easy prey. Exactly. Yeah. It's very petty, too, because sometimes I brood over small things. Like, I remember even, like, this this thing that's so dumb. I was at Ikea, and I was going to park my, my – I was going to park my car in the front space so I could load my stuff, and the guy just cut me off. Oh, so and, rude. And I just – 
I was trying to not say anything and I didn't say something, but he, he came up and he goes, and I'm looking at him like, yo, bro, like that was my spot. He goes, are you just going to stand there? Do you want to help me out? Like you want to help me pack my stuff in or what? That's what he said. That's to what you? he said to me. That's so fucking and then, rude. And dude. I was trying to be like a really good guy. So I just let it go. But I thought about, oh, dude. I thought about fucking that guy up for like two months. Cause I couldn't, I didn't get to say what I wanted you to say. Feel like he I, had one on you. Yes, yeah. like that's I felt, bullshit though. Cause he's being a dick just because he can, you know, exactly. Like, and that. there's like security, there's everybody over here, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't do anything. And I just, I remember that brooded in my and head. And you're for, good at roasting too. I, because all I wanted to do was just fucking crack him in the fucking face. Oh, I yeah. hope all his IKEA furniture breaks. I hope he's putting <laughs> it together and they don't have. The right screws he's screwing in he's having he gets fucking it takes him three hours to put all shit together because that's what happens to me and that is the most infuriating thing dude ever. i hope his i hope he, he was fucking his girlfriend that night and the condom broke yeah yeah and then all of a sudden <laughs> he has to she has to birth this fucking bastard child of his world i hope yeah that guy sucks dude it was like one of the most rudest things that, i ever heard because he's being a dick on purpose and he's testing you yeah he's he's he puts the ball he's like all right balls in your court motherfucker yeah. what are you gonna do and oh, I, nothing. That's what I thought. I, I just like keeping. What was he? What, what race was he? He was, of course, El Blanco. Yeah, and dude, I just see, had to sit there and just take it. I think. I think. Shit. Well, you grew up around a lot of white kids, right? No, not no, really. Didn't. Mexican people. <laughs> I grew up oh, with a lot of white. Like it was a mixed bag. Most of the kids I grew up with were like black and like browns. Oh, I thought you went to that. Uh, special. I did that for two years. Oh, okay, and well, it was actually another, it was a pretty mixed bag over there too. Oh, okay. but a lot of white people too. Okay, because I I thought your area had a lot of white, but I mm -hmm. I um I realized like that they are a completely different culture. Yeah, yeah. like there there's a mutual understanding among minorities. I think the 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 code of conduct. Yeah, on maybe just street mentality because there are some street ass white people too. Yeah, but when it comes to that snarky ass fucking smart aleck like they they're the way that they fight is through trying to get to each other mm -hmm. like by words right it's like a roast fest right but like you do it with complete strangers um you're asking for it dude well it's it's different though because yeah. I, I what i realize is that what they'll do that back and forth to see if they could get each other angry mm. and then it's kind of like you push me first and then, and then whoever does the violation, they could sue. Oh. So they play a different game. That's the kid that was going to be your best friend. At that yeah, study hall. He's just, it's like the same, the same fucking of version shit. of it. But this time I didn't get to let my anger go. Yeah. So, I, you know, and, you know, I, I let it go after a few months because I was it's done. Like, what are you still fucking angry about? But I just I can still remember the fucking guy's face because oh, it's man. just I didn't get to do anything. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't tell him to shut the fuck up. Yeah, I mean, we don't go by those yeah. rules. Right. So it's like, oh, if you if you if you give fighting words, yeah. then it's like, oh, you're challenging me to a fucking fight. Yeah. And then you either do it or you don't and you walk away yeah. and it's like, fine. But that's a different world. Yeah. I don't think they're ready for it. I was like, why are you so mean to me, man? <laughs> I'm like, why are you yeah. being so fucking After mean to me? After you took my parking space? Yeah, like you fucked up. You're the asshole. On and top like, of all that, you're going to be like, oh, you're going to help me with you know, this? And, oh, you know, so rude. Oh, that gets me so mad. And I, we also talk about this too, because it always feels like for me, just because <laughs> maybe it's the way that I grew up, it always feels like, I don't want to say, you know what? I, I will say this because- it, it felt like white guys making fun of small little Asian guys. See, that's the thing. That's what it always yeah. feels. That's mm. what it felt like. It's like you. Oh, you're Asian. I get to. I, I'm gonna I could, make because I guarantee you, if it was a big black dude, he wouldn't say that to him. He, absolutely. Hell not. no. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because oh, I mean, off, the dude. only thing I did, like, I just, I was so fucking mad. I just stood outside my car and I just kept staring at him, and the guy just. He kept averting his eyes, but I just, I was like, what am I supposed to do? Am I going to just- Was he by himself? No, he was with his girlfriend. So what am I supposed to do? I'm going to fucking start wailing on this guy. And I just kept staring at him and staring at him. Oh, man. And he man. just kept not looking at me. And he was like, he was a pretty big dude too. So if he wanted to throw down, it would have, we could have threw down. Yeah. But, you know, I think being like a fat, chubby Asian guy, he was like, I'm just going to say whatever to him. And it just yeah. makes me feel like he's belittling. It's that belittling thing, dude. Mm -hmm. And it just stuck with me for like a couple oh, months. Ugh. I don't like that either. And I'm still angry about it till this day. It's so dumb. And it happened so many years ago, like seven, eight years ago. But I feel like that's a, it's not a good reason to be mad, but 
if you had to be mad about something, I would be fucking pissed about that. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, because oh, oh, he's testing you. He's he's, he's Yeah, yeah. It's, why it's different... would you ever say that to a, a random stranger? Yeah. Why would you ever want to put that type of energy out there? They they operate in a different culture. Yeah. Like because I don't get that shit from Mexicans. Yeah. I don't get that shit from black people. None yeah. of none of, like is just it's just different. And they they do that to each other. I I realized I thought like oh fuck that's just they're fucking racist and they think they can do that to me or whatever. They do that to each other, dude. Yeah. Mm. So they just play by a different set of rules that I I don't understand. It's no consequences. I remember when the first time I hung out with this white dude and his family and I saw how they would like talk to each other. Yeah. I was like, yo, you are cussing at. Your, we were in like high school. I was like, dude, you're cussing at your mom different and your dad rules. right now. I was like, dude, if that was yeah. me. Mm. Oh, I'm getting murdered by my whole Get family. Get the fuck yeah. out of my room, Janine. Yeah, like, no. And on the way to like a family dinner and I was like, yo, this is. Yeah, and they could be like smart asses to each other and all that. And it's it's just You're different. such a fucking bitch, mom. And I was like, whoa, dude. I <laughs> would love to fucking go-go plata. <laughs> my kid. I just yeah. kid. I feel like, I feel like that Ooh, game that they're playing, it action. seems like whoever <laughs> takes, whoever takes it personal loses. Mm. that's what it seems like Makes you seem weak yeah so it's like oh be you know how they're like everyone's taught oh. to be the bigger man and don't be violent right yeah so that's kind of like the mutual understanding that they have some dudes just gotta get punched in the face though yes i think <laughs> you know? so the, I, but I, you know what though the blue collared white folks are like they're they don't, different they don't do that shit no. yeah they're like no you gotta punch that motherfucker in the face yeah they're different i i never get that shit from them i maybe it's like a rich person thing I think it is. It's probably yeah. a rich person thing because I'm pretty sure like a rich Asian person or a rich Mexican person would have the same shit. Yeah, because that true. shit right there is, is it's so annoying. It's like uppity, and right? I've learned to deal with that. The is fucking, some uppity shit. It is some uppity yeah. shit, and I've learned to deal with this rage in the worst way possible, like punching walls and shit. Mm -hmm. Or after a while, like I mentioned this on JK News too, I like people who would just fucking like dent my car or whatever or do some asshole shit i would just i would literally have nails in my car and i would stick nails at the back of their fucking tires That's funny. <laughs> so when they would go back they it would pierce their tires but it wouldn't pop their tires yeah yeah, yeah. so it just starts to slowly take the gas <laughs> you out. know what you should have done you should have been like if he when he says hey you're gonna help me load my car you should be like oh yeah for sure yeah. you know what you should have said it was like oh yes it yeah for sure. <laughs> and it's, oh so 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 and you take it and then you just fucking drop all of his shit on the floor i know and then you just walk away and that's, that's what you should have done tip this card over you'd be like oh yeah i'll help you out bam yeah. and then just drop it, God, it's just, it that was one of those moments where i was speechless yeah like, i didn't know what to I, say I, what do you do i wouldn't have done anything probably yeah. I'd be like you know what man fuck you and i would call <laughs> my car and like, i just kept staring at him just pissed off just like no blinks, just fucking staring at him because I didn't yeah. know what to say. That and is a tough thing, situation. It's going in my mind. It's like, should I hit him? Should I not? There's security right there. There's people right here. There's you know, there's kids around. Like, what the fuck do I do? Hitting him would have not been the right thing to do. There's cameras everywhere. There's cameras everywhere. What am I supposed you know, to do? But you should have hit him with your car. I should have. I wish I was like, hey, why don't you go inside, buddy, so I could put these nails in the back of your tires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the way, don't do that, people. That's a yeah, very bad thing to do. Rude. But I used to love doing it. And you have to make sure you <laughs> stick it in uh, pretty hard. You can't just lay it there and prop it up against it. You actually have to kind of lightweight pierce it so it goes in. You have to do it on the tread, too. You have to yeah. Do it on the tread. And it has to be almost vertical. Like, it can't, it can't so just be funny. at an angle. Dude, you're fucking... You've done that a couple of times. Huh? Yeah. And I used to keep that cars shit out. happened to one of my cars. Was that you? No, <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> that happened to my car recently. <laughs> yeah, Joe. Fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody knows. Wait, I had a fucking flat tire last Damn week. Damn it, David. I, I had to get my flat tire. Just tell me if week. I hurt your feelings or something. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Just tell me about it. I'm homie. so tired of taking it to the fucking. <laughs> I'll go to your house. <laughs> I say it's karma though, because since I came to LA, I think that's happened to me like 10 or 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or we just have a lot of nails on the street. Yeah. You know, there's, there's construction, construction yeah. everywhere, yeah. man. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, well, shit. Well, time's up, everybody. Oh, it's Did time we talk for about dinner. what we were supposed to? We had another fucking topic. <laughs> and we didn't talk about it again. That's the, I should have brought this, it up. Well, we were kind of on topic because oh, we just talked about anger problems. Yeah. Well, guys. Um, don't have anger problems, guys. To conclude this, uh, I am not a thug whatsoever. If you can't tell just by watching this video, I'm a fucking dweeb, but I ain't no bitch. I am a fucking righteous bitch in your fucking face. Uh, that uh, wraps up this episode. I don't even know what the fuck we were talking about, but you guys are flies on the wall listening into from some interesting conversations.
Yeah, man. But check us out on Spotify, CastBox, and all the other good shit. Uh, leave us those five stars on iTunes. You can check Nick at Nick the Ear on Instagram, uh, NickTheEar.com, where you could see his face there. And you remember he's a he's a he's a personal training specialist, an amateur former amateur fighter. Doesn't matter. We don't talk about that stuff anymore. You no, know, we do because it makes me feel gangster because I'm associated with him. <laughs> you shouldn't because I'm like the softest out there. Yep. Well, he has taught me nothing. I got beat up so bad today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we will see y'all next time, man. Toodaloo. Peace. Thank you.